All right guys, so super simple destruction tutorial for you today. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can create some very simple rigid body shockwave effects. You can use this effect in a lot of different ways. For example, if you want to do a superhero landing type effect, or maybe you want to do an explosion shockwave or some kind of superhero force field. So lots of different applications for it. I'm going to go ahead and get started here. I will delete our light as well as our camera here and just start off with our default cube here. And I'm just going to scale it down on the Z axis to create some kind of floor here like so and we'll make it pretty thin for the sake of this tutorial just maybe make it a little bit larger here all right so this is going to be our passive ground and what we want to do is fracture something on the top of it as well so to do this what we'll do is we will press shift d and duplicate our cube and then i'll just scale it down a little bit so that our duplicated cube is slightly smaller than our main cube here and then i'll just bring this up here so it's slightly above our main passive cube here so as you can see here this second cube is intersecting with our main cube here and what we want to do is we want to create the geometry where they are intersecting and then fracture that geometry so uh, essentially give the effect of this object fracturing in certain areas so to do that i'll go to our chaos tab here and i'll scroll down here past our explosion systems and go to destruction tools and then i'll select our smaller cube and then hold down shift and select our object that we want to cut together and then i'll click on cut to objects and now as you can see here we have this smaller cube within our our main larger cube here and they are in their own separate objects and we have our original cube object that we used to cut our ground plane here in the collection chaos underscore original object so right here and as i mentioned in previous videos this is just so in case you have any errors with your rigid body simulations you can just go back to the start of your project and deal with any glitches from the beginning all right so i'll just uh, select both of our objects here and just pull it off to the side of our scene and uh, what i want to do is first make our ground plane here that is containing our other object and make it a passive rigid body so that the simulation interacts with it. So I'll just go here to add passive rigid bodies and I'll click on the complex option. So now this object will have rigid body traits applied to it so that when other rigid bodies collide with it, they will interact. And now what I want to do is I want to fracture this interior object here. So I'll go back to our chaos destruction tools tab here and I want to fracture this object using our annotation tool and self fracture settings here. So I'll click on draw fracture place and then I'll just start drawing where I want the most uh, fractured objects to be and then go out from there. So I want most of our smaller fractures to be in the center of our interior object here and then the bigger chunks to be out on the edges. But uh, just kind of play around with it and have some fun with your fracturing and uh, you should be good to go. So I'm going to go with something like this. Now I'll go ahead and click on selection box so our annotation tool is no longer selected and then I'll make sure our interior object is selected and then I want to fracture it from the drawing of our annotation. However, I do want to increase the source limit here to maybe uh, I'll try something like 250 just so there are a few more fractured pieces in there. And then I'm also going to increase the recursion to maybe two and go ahead and enter there. And now I'll click on from drawing. And now self fracture will fracture our interior object using our annotation tool. And you can see the recursion happening right now where it's fracturing those secondary particles. All right, so now Self Fracture has fractured our object and Destruction Tools has added it into our own collection with the label Chaos-001, which comes from the name here. And if you ever fracture more objects in your scene, you have the drop down menu here to select those fractured collections. So as you can see here, if we want to select our fractured object, we can just click on select while our drop down menu here has the Chaos-001 collection selected. And now we can turn all of these into active rigid bodies. So I'll go ahead and scroll down here to active rigid bodies and I'll click on add active and now as you can see here if we play through our scene well nothing will happen and that's just because they're resting on our main uh, object here but regardless we do want them to start deactivated so I'll go ahead and click on start deactivated and we also can change the mass of our objects to a variety of different materials here I'm going to leave it at break for now but feel free to play around with these different materials and now what I want to do is create the shockwave effect. So to do that, what we want to do is we want to create an object that creates kind of an animated wedge going outward from the center of our fractured rigid bodies here over time. So a good shape for that would be something like a torus. So I'll go ahead and press shift A, I'll add a mesh torus. And as you can see here, this is the object we're going to use to create our shockwave effect. I'll grab our object, move it to the center of our fractured object and just below the surface of it. Maybe scale it up slightly so we can see how we're looking here and I'll just make sure we place it fairly nicely here and what I want to do is maybe just uh, scale it up a little bit on the X and the Y axis so it's a little bit wider like so and now we'll go ahead and animate this torus so I'll go to uh, 
maybe frame 30 is where we'll start. I'll put our torus below our mesh here. Click on I, add a location and rotation scale keyframe. Actually, I wanna do this on frame 30. Move this over here. And now I'll go to frame uh, 32 when we want our shock wave to start. I'll press G, I'll grab our torus and I'll bring it up so it's hitting our objects here. Make sure it's intersecting with your fractured collection here. And uh, now we'll press I again, add another location, rotation and scale keyframe. And at this point we want to animate it moving outward. So maybe on frame 40, we'll scale it up here and I might scale it down on the Z axis so it's not protruding quite as much. Press I again, add another location, rotation and scale keyframe. And now we have something like this. All right, so that's the basis of our shockwave. Now we need to make this torus an active animated rigid body. So I'll just go here to Chaos Destruction Tools and click on Active Animated. And now as you can see here, if we play through our scene, we have a pretty cool looking shockwave effect. And uh, already I'm pretty happy with this result. Uh, we could of course make the shockwave go out further. So maybe frame 40, we just make it a little larger all the way out here. Press I again, kind of adjust it a bit. And there you go. That's how you can create a shockwave. I'm not quite done here, but uh, this is a pretty good start to our simulation. Uh, we could constrain our fractured objects here. So I'll go ahead and do that a little bit. I'll just select some of the, maybe some of these objects near the center, some of these big chunks. And I'll just start selecting some that I want to stick together during the course of our rigid body simulation. So we'll try something like this. And then I'll scroll down here to our constraints tab and I can just click on create. And now as you can see here, under our chaos-001 collection, we have a new collection called chaos-001 constraint, and all of those constraints are added. And whenever you want to create a new collection, any constraint that you've added to the chaos-001 fractured system will be under this drop-down menu here, and you can select and adjust them. So as you can see, I can just select our constraints here, and we can make them breakable, and we can also change the threshold for them to break. So I'll go ahead and just play through our scene at its default and see what it's doing so far and we definitely don't want what's happening right now. We're getting a little bit of rigid body glitches, so perhaps uh, there's a little bit too much force happening right at the center of the scene here, um, and there's nowhere for it to go, so it's kind of acting a little glitchy on us. And it's not uncommon for rigid body simulations in Blender to have some effects like this, especially when you're using constraints, which is uh, why this system is helpful, so we can just delete this constraint if it's causing issues. But um, before I delete this, I'm just gonna kind of experiment with it. I might just click the breakable option, and then, uh, increase the threshold for it to break. So uh, I think that should solve our issue. And there you have it. And now the objects restricted by that constraint are being held together up until a certain amount of force. And we still have a pretty cool looking result. And maybe we can actually increase the threshold here to 1000. Let's just try that out see if that gives us a different result. So as you can see, now they're breaking at different moments in our simulation, which is uh, kind of a cool look. Perhaps we could also constrain some of these edge pieces to our passive rigid body floor here. So we'll go ahead and create a new constraint there and uh, we'll make it just a standard unbreakable constraint. And let's see if this uh, gets a cool result as well. All right, so still some glitches. So obviously this is why you have to experiment with different options. I didn't anticipate in this kind of glitching for this uh, simple effect, but uh, sometimes it happens. So I'll just make it breakable as well and see what we get here. Still giving us a little bit of problems there. So let's go ahead and just delete that constraint and maybe just constrain some of these objects together. Let's try this, create a new one. And we'll make it we'll make it not breakable. So that's kind of cool. As you can see now, these are all kind of sticking together when the object is fractured. See right here. So that's kind of a cool result. Maybe we could do the same thing on the other edges, just so some bigger chunks are kind of stuck together at the edges. So I'll create a new constraint there as well, and let's try this out. All right, so that's kind of cool. You have uh, you know, some of the pieces along the edges here constrained together, which is a nice look. And uh, yeah, so I'm pretty happy with this result, regardless of some of our glitches we had at first. I think it's a pretty cool looking shockwave effect. 
But uh, yeah, I'm pretty happy with this result. Now it's time to add that small scale debris to really bring our simulation to life. So to do this, what I'll do is I'll find the moment where our rigid body simulation starts. So about, I'm gonna say about right here on frame 35. And I'll just select our uh, entire collection here. You can also select objects more specifically, but I think for the sake of this tutorial, we're going to emit small scale debris from all of our collection here. Then I'll just scroll up here to our main chaos tab and we can choose which debris we want to add as small scale debris. So for the sake of this tutorial, I'm just going to use the dirt option for really small particles. And I'll just click on add debris on frame 35. And it won't look like anything has happened so far, but as soon as you play through your simulation once more, you'll notice that we have some small scale dirt on our simulation as well, which uh, you know is a pretty cool looking result. Obviously our dirt is a little bit too big. So to solve this and make it smaller, I'll just select one of our debris particles with the particle system on it. Go to the particle tab here. I will decrease the number of particles to say 100 and scroll down here to our render size and just bring down the scale to maybe 0 0.03 and uh, play through it again really quick. And now we have small scale dirt on our simulation. And I think this is going to look pretty cool. I might uh, maybe increase the number of particles a bit to maybe 150. But at this point, it's just a matter of playing around with your uh, simulation until you get something that you like. But uh, yeah, I'm pretty happy with this shockwave effect to bake our simulation so that you can render it out or maybe overlay it on top of live action footage if you've textured it properly. Uh, we could just go to our uh, particle system tab here with uh, one of our particle system rigid body selected and then I'll just go to cache and then I can just bake all dynamics and then Blender will go through all of your frames in your rigid body simulation and bake out the rigid body simulation as well as the particle effects. And there we have it. That is how you can create some pretty cool shock waves with small scale debris on the system. Of course, if you want to add more small scale debris, you can choose any of these debris systems and add them to specific rigid bodies in your scene as well if you want a little bit more variation. Also, if you want your small scale debris to interact with your main ground plane here, all you have to do is just go ahead and go to the physics properties tab and make it a collision object for particles. And then I recommend increasing the damping here a bit so that these smaller particles don't bounce awkwardly off of this ground plane here and then you'll just rebake your particle system from there but anyways guys just a quick rigid body destruction tutorial for you today i hope this video was helpful as always feel free to leave a comment if you have any questions or suggestions in the comment section below let us know what you'd like to see next on the channel or if you'd like us to update anything specific in this add-on we'd be happy to hear any recommendations there as well i'll see you next time